latest Trump indictment centers on some of the real people who were victims of Trump's alleged pressure campaign around the 2020 election, people like Ruby Freeman and Shea Moss, who served as poll workers in Fulton County. Trump and his allies accused these women of election fraud and subjected them to a public campaign of unyielding harassment. And the racist undercurrent of all that was not subtle. This is Shea Moss testifying to the January 6th committee in June of last year. Were, were a lot of these threats and, and vile comments racist in nature? A lot of them were racist. A lot of them were just hateful, wishing death upon me, um, telling me that, you know, I'm, I'll be in jail with my mother and saying things like, be glad it's 2020 and not 1920. Trump's allies also allegedly tried to coerce Freeman and Moss into confessing to crimes they never committed. Just weeks after the 2020 election, a mysterious white man showed up and began banging on Ms. Freeman's door. Ms. Freeman didn't recognize the man, and so she turned him away and called the police, who then spoke to this man outside her home. Hey, what's going on? Yeah, my name's Steve Lee. Yep. And uh, I'm a pastor, and I'm also working with some folks who are trying to help Ruby out. You may want to let her know that, you know, I've got some pro bono uh, mm -hmm. service for her. The strange man who was offering pro bono services was a man named Stephen Cliffgard Lee. He is one of the 19 people who was indicted last night by D.A. Fonnie Willis. And this is what the indictment says about Mr. Lee. On or between the 15th day of December 2020 and the 4th day of January 2021, Stephen Cliffgard Lee solicited Harrison Floyd, an individual associated with the organization Black Voices for Trump, to assist with his effort to speak to Ruby Freeman. Stephen Cliffgard Lee stated to Harrison Floyd that Ms. Freeman was afraid to talk to Stephen Cliffgard Lee because he was a white man. Apparently, after Ms. Freeman wouldn't talk to him, the white man, Mr. Lee, he called Harrison Floyd, the head of Black Voices for Trump. Mr. Floyd then tried to call Ruby Freeman. He tried several times, but he was unsuccessful. So he, in turn, recruited someone else, someone named Trevion Kuti, a Black publicist for the Trump-supporting Nazi apologist and artist Kanye West, who now goes by the name Ye. Now, in December of 2021, a spokesperson for Ye said the artist was not associated with Trevion Kuti when all of this went down. But it should be said that Donald Trump has repeatedly used Ye as a supportive black face to bolster his own extreme and incendiary politics. And Ye, at the same time that that has happened, has drifted further and further to the right, openly embracing Nazism, anti-black rhetoric and Donald Trump. So, on or around January 4th, former Ye publicist Trevian Kuti showed up at Ruby Freeman's door, saying she was sent by a high-profile individual and urging Ms. Freeman to confess to Trump's baseless allegations of voter fraud, or people would come to Ms. Freeman's home in 48 hours and put her in jail. But Ruby Freeman was not having it. She called the police once again, and an officer took Freeman and Kuti to a police precinct where body camera footage captured Kuti seeming to threaten Ms. Freeman. I cannot say what specifically will take place, Kuti said to Ms. Freeman. I just know that it will disrupt your freedom and the freedom of one or more of your family members. Well, now, Trevi and Kuti and Harrison Floyd are among the 19 individuals charged in Fonnie Willis's case. And this is the first time we are seeing charges for the people who allegedly directly orchestrated Trump's campaign of harassment against those two black poll workers. And it is the first attempt at justice for the two black women whose lives were upended by Trump's racist conspiracies, his supporters' racist threats, and his lackeys' racist pressure campaigns.